Jeremy, welcome. So good to have you here at our seven o'clock Christmas Eve service. We're glad that you chose to join with us. And thanks to the booth, folks are also joining us virtually at this time. So I welcome all of you. If you're in house, we'd like to ask you to take a moment and greet those who are near you. Let's introduce ourselves to one another in Christ's love. Again, it's great to have you joining us for worship tonight. As you look around tonight, um, Reverend Ryder, um, as we were planning this service, his wife is the pastor of the Presbyterian Church in Sefner, and so Sarah and I told him that we'd be glad to handle this service, and he could spend tonight in Sefner enjoying his family on Christmas Eve. Then Sarah went north to Ohio to visit her family before Christmas, and I got a text yesterday morning saying Reverend Sarah is one of the 5,700 flights that were canceled coming back to Florida. Um, she and her father, though, hopped in the car since he was going to come down and spend a little time Christmas and afterward. And at the beginning of the first service, I think they had crossed the Florida line driving down from Ohio. So as I told the folks earlier, playing the part of Reverend Sarah tonight and some of the readings will be Reverend Steve instead. So just tolerate that. I want to thank everyone who's done so much to have our Christmas Eve services possible here. We do have folks who are in the booth and on the sound, and we thank them so much because they help us to reach out to folks around and also to worship here. Our choirs are with us tonight, and we thank them for that. Our readers and so many folks who have just prepared the church for this evening and are here to help us celebrate. Also want to thank those of you who donated lilies. I'm lilies. I'm at Easter already. Poinsettias. And the poinsettias in honor or in memory of family members, and we just thank you for that as we've adorned the sanctuary tonight. So thank you for all that. We are going to take an offering as we leave tonight, and our tradition here is the Christmas Eve offering does not stay here at First Presbyterian Church. The Christmas Eve offering is dedicated to medical missions, and so you'll see in the bulletin it says there are three medical missions through the Medical Benevolence Foundation helping us to blank the globe that we'll be sending a quarter of our donations to there. And the last quarter goes to Honduras, and our prayers are that we will return to Honduras this coming summer and join in medical mission in Honduras. And so if you would like to donate to medical missions, there's a medical bag and collection plate in the back and collection plate off the balcony, and you can just do that as you leave tonight. Friends, it's so good to have you here tonight. Let us now prepare our hearts to worship God.
Please join me now as we turn in our bulletins to Micah 5, 2 through 4. You'll find that as the call to worship. But you, O Bethlehem, who are one of the little clans of Judah, for from you shall come forth the one who is to rule in Israel, who is from old, from the ancient of days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. Tonight we join God's people around the world celebrating that Christ the Savior is born. be seated. Friends, I ask you now to join your hearts with me as we bow before God in prayer. Loving God, we come out on this holy night because we realize something special is still happening in this world. Wonderful God, as we come here tonight, we know that we tell an age-old story, and yet it's a story that's new to us each time we experience the birth of Christ in our hearts. God, on this holy night, we think about those who are beginning to gather as they came to celebrate a birth. God, we know that the Prince of Peace was born in Bethlehem, and yet we live in a world where peace is not always a reality. God, we pray that around this globe tonight and in the days to come, people might turn from warfare, from anger, from bitterness, that they might find a way to reconcile with one another 
and that they might see that war happens no longer. We pray for those in war-torn countries. We pray for those who right now are experiencing violence and threat. And God, we ask that peace might truly be a reality in our day, in our time, and in our lives. God, as we think about that holy child of Bethlehem, we realize that he is one who grew to save so many. We think of him as the adult who healed the sick, who led people down the correct path. And God, we ask you to make us into those type of followers this day. We pray for our loved ones and friends who need the healing touch of the great physician. We pray for those tonight who are confined to hospitals, to rehab centers, to nursing homes, or to their own homes. We ask you to touch them with healing so that they might know of peace in body, mind, and spirit. Wonderful God, as we think about this Christ child, we know he was the Savior of the world. And we praise you, God, for the Savior's presence in our lives. As we come tonight, we are like those who gather to that first manger. We come to behold him as Christ the Lord. We come to offer what gifts we bring. We come to open our hearts so he might find home in us. Wonderful God, as we gather here this night, we celebrate that people all around the globe are also gathering at the right time in worship, that they are praising you, that we are a part of the great throng of those for over 2,000 years who have come out to sing the songs we know, to hear the stories that we treasure, and to celebrate that Christ is born into our world and into our lives. As we think about the Holy Child of Bethlehem, we praise you for his presence with us, and we remember that he taught his disciples to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
friends, let us now proclaim the wondrous birth of Christ in our lessons and carols. The lighting of the first Advent candle, the prophets foretold. first reading is from the book of Isaiah, the ninth chapter. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Our second lesson tonight is also from Isaiah, but chapter 11, starting with verse 1. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The sucking child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The lighting of the second Advent candle. Mary will have a son.
The third reading is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And you will now conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
Lighting of the third Advent candle also includes a time with younger disciples. I'm hoping Abby will give me one more year of coming down. Maybe. So I will invite any young people who would like to join us down front. We're going to come down during Hark the Herald Angels Sing. The lighting of the third Advent candle, a great joy to all the people.
thank you ladies for coming down to help us with our story tonight. I want to read a story that I know you're familiar with, but before we get there, I want us to look at a Christmas tree. Do you have a Christmas tree at your house? Do you have more than one Christmas tree at your house? It seems that's popular these days. A small one and a large one, and you have two or more? More Christmas trees? Well, this year we only put up one big Christmas tree at our house. We usually have a smaller one, but we were having lots of company in, and so we didn't do that. But this tree stays up at my house all year. And this little tree stays up on top of a cabinet that I have that's filled with nativity sets. And if you look close on this tree, it's a nativity tree. It's a real Christmas tree. So we're going to tell a story here, and I'm going to pause and show you some of the ornaments off that. The story is probably my favorite part of the Christmas story. It's in Luke chapter 2, and it starts like this. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town in Nazareth, called, or of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. So looking at my Christmas tree here, when we spin it around here, we come to a place where, come here, come here, come here, I know it's on here. Where's the baby, where's the baby? Perfect, thank you. Mary, <laughs> Joseph, but where's the baby? Oh, no. Okay, we've got a real problem. Okay, let me go look in the basket real quick, okay? No, no, no. Okay, that's great. In the quick turnaround between the two services, we've lost the baby Jesus. So, look at this little nativity set. There's a baby Jesus in there. You see him? And as soon as I find him, I'll put him back on this tree. We'll put him right there, because there's Mary and there's Joseph, and we saw the story. Oh, let's go on. Well, I know. Now the baby has, a, he's a little manger with straw and he's probably on the table in the Edinburgh room. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Emily. And Emily saved the day. Here's the baby Jesus. Look at him. He's tiny. He's smiling. There's straw all around. And he's asleep on the hay. How do they have a pillow and a pillow? Did they prepare a pillow? Okay, you're right. Good question. Probably didn't have a real nice baby pillow, did they, at that time? So we'll take that one out, and the baby Jesus is asleep on the hay. Now he's floating. So we're going to put him in here with Mary and Joseph. Okay, we'll put him in his own. Okay. Okay, but there's Mary and Joseph. Now let's go back to the story again. Hopefully Emily's not going to have to save us one more time. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I'm bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. For he was born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Messiah and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. 
you will find a babe wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Uh, a, baby. a baby lying in the manger. And it says, suddenly there was with the angel, there's the baby, the angel. And how do you know that's an angel? Okay, people always say, well, she does look like a fairy, doesn't she? She has a little wand there with a star on it. And she has wings on the back, and she's got a little halo. Gabriel, Gabriel, maybe? Yeah, but it's an angel, and it says... Well, Gabriel had gone from place to place to place. He had talked to Mary, you're right about that. But in this one it just said, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And then suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, a whole bunch more angels, and they sang this song. It's one. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. And when the angels left them, the shepherds, went with haste to Bethlehem. Now, not only did I lose my baby Jesus on this one, there's another problem with this tree. Wait, let me now, let me tell you. Let me tell you the problem. This tree wasn't real popular when Hallmark put it out. So the first you got, Mary, Joseph, and the baby. That was the first one. Then they let you add animals and three wise men and not enough people bought it and they never had shepherds never so they had sheep they had animals well i'm going to tell you about the shepherd they had sheep and since i love this tree so much i added my own shepherd right there that's right linus <laughs> That's Linus's blanket. That's right. No, it's attached because I drilled a hole in the top there and made my elastic. That's his blanket. Well, in Charlie Brown Christmas, he puts his blanket on his head when his sister tries to take his blanket away. So, the shepherds went over, and let's see what they did. Well, the sheep were round there, and when the angels left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said, let's go to Bethlehem right now and see this thing that's taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried to Bethlehem, and they found Mary and Joseph and a baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known to them what had been told about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things, and she pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds went back to the fields, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. That's the word of the Lord. And it's the story of what went on that night. Well, that is a star that went ahead of the wise men... You know, at the early service, they thought that was a son, too. Probably, Hallmark already had a son in their collection and just put it here with a little band around it. Yeah. But they followed a star, and the three wise men came. And we're going to sing about that, and we're also going to hear about that in a few minutes in the next story. It should. We're going to work on this one a little bit more. But like I tell you, I keep this tree out all year, and it sits on top of a case that has about 75 nativities in it. And then if you come, if you come to my office, you'll find another 15, maybe 20 nativities there. Okay, um, come by, Don't, not tonight, because it's getting really late, and I've got grandkids in town. You come by when you're here again, and I'll show you the nativities in my office. And I'm going to give you all a nativity each tonight. And I know you probably don't want to go back to your seats and color, 
but I'm going to give you a packet with a little nativity for your tree and some stickers in there if you've got some friends that want some nativity stickers, okay? Let's have a prayer first, and then we're all going to sing a song together, and then I'll send you back. Loving God, I thank you for these incredible young women who know the story. I thank you for how they can lead me in the story and how they can tell the story to people around of how a baby was born in Bethlehem and that baby became our Savior, Jesus. God, help us to have that story in our hearts and on our tongues and help us to continue to tell it in Christ's name. Amen. Now, at the early service, we had the children down here sing the first verse of Way in a Manger. Not doing that to you by yourself. But I want everybody here to go from your memory from Away in a Manger for the first verse. And let's stand and sing together. And then they have the words and they'll join in. So let's all just stand and sing Away in a Manger.
lighting of the fourth Advent candle, let us come and worship. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star as its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When the King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all his chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired them of where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For from you shall come ruler, who is the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called to the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen as its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. lighting of the Christ candle, the light of the world. Listen to a reading from John chapter 1. 
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of human beings, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sharing the light of life. John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
for nearly a hundred years, people have come into this sanctuary on Sunday mornings to worship God. And we still continue that tradition of the Lord's Day, coming together to praise and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus. There are two nights in the year that we also gather together. We come on Ash Wednesday. And at that service of ashes, we end by having our foreheads or our hands marked by the ashes. And one of the most beautiful sights is to stand up front here and look out over this sea of disciples marked with the sign of the cross, showing that they are followers of Jesus. The other beautiful night is tonight. It's a night when we pass the love of Christ to one another, when we show what happens when our hearts continue to share, share that light. The light shines in the darkness, John said, and the darkness still has not overcome it. We sing these songs, we read these scriptures, because this story means so much to us, because we have given the Christ child a home in our hearts. Now, if you'll join me, let's lift the, life, lift the light of Christ to the world, and let's continue to share that now and forever. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with each of you. Merry Christmas.